we get one of the most practical guides that you can use for your life. And I guarantee you, if you implement the keys, the principles that Jesus lays out here today, it will improve your prayer life. So go ahead and stand with me as we look at verses 9 through 13. Verse 9 says this, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And this prayer he gives is a guide on how to improve your prayer life. And let's be honest, people struggle with prayer. The average Christian admits to only praying a couple times a week and only for a couple minutes at a time. But Jesus gives us five keys this morning that are going to unlock a fruitful prayer life. And, and he wants us to be able to, to implement these. Now, in verse 9, he says, pray then like this, or pray like this. He does not say, pray in these words. He never meant for this prayer to be repeated ad nauseum without even thinking about it. And you know, there are million, millions of people reciting this prayer, thinking it suffices for a prayer life, and they really have missed the points. Because he says, pray in this manner. Use this prayer as a pattern, not as a substitute. And as we learn the categories, and we start to pray over those, you'll start to notice that our prayer life not only grows longer, but it grows deeper. You see, God is not, you know, he's happy with two minutes of prayer, but, but he knows that, that we have much more to pray for than just that two minutes. And he wants to give us what's necessary. Because a lot of times, you know, we run out of things to pray for in, in two minutes, and that's why we stop. But these things that he shows us this morning, these keys he shows us this morning, will actually increase not, not only the length of the prayer, but what we pray for, the depth of it. Okay, and, and it shows us five petitions. Now, we all know what a petition is. It's those things that people stand outside of Walmart with, the papers that everyone wants people to sign, right? You know, and there's always some kind of cause that people are doing position. You can go online to change.org, and they have millions of different petitions for all these different things. And, and, and the whole principle is that if you get a lot of people signing a petition, that it will, it will move or sway people. You can actually change ballots or do ballot initiatives and all that kind of stuff. Well, we have five petitions here, but these are our petitions to the Lord. Two petitions are to the Lord. Three petitions are for ourselves. And so he wants to teach us. Oh, I love those Gonzalez girls. Yeah, <laughs> they are lively this morning. <laughs> and so three are for ourselves. And in the Bible, prayer is worship that includes all the attitudes of the human spirit in its approach to God. And when the, the Christian prays, he worships God by adoring him and confessing sins and praising him and, and lifting up their needs. But we should never pray out of obligation. We should always pray because God has touched our spirit. And that's what I want to show you this morning. So I want to show you these five ones, these five keys. The first key to improve your prayer life is to adore God. Adore God. Adore means deep love and respect. My, my youngest daughter, who plays piano, was, was here in first service. She was sitting here. And, and, and I used to have this thing I would do with her because she would come out and she would dress herself. And, and sometimes she hit the mark, but most of the time she would, you know, a young little girl kind of miss the mark kind of thing. And she'd be like, Daddy, how do I look? And so, of course, I'd go, oh. Maddie, you look adorable. And I would like emphasize it and I would have fun with her kind of thing. And it'd be kind kind of a thing. And she loved it as a kid. Not so much as a teenager anymore, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, and so, but I do it to mess it with her, so, with her sometimes. But it's just like, but, I, it was, but it was my way to show that deep love and just, and just like kind of praising her and all that kind of stuff. And, and it was kind of our thing. Well, 
the Lord is encouraging us to adore the Lord. Okay, to give, to show that deep love and respect. And that's what we see here, because I want to show you two facets right here. First of all, he prays, our Father in heaven. Okay, so that's the adore, and I'll explain that more. But then there's also, hallowed be your name. And so we, we, through the, our Father, we see the deep love, and through the hallowed be your name, you see that deep respect. Now, what's interesting in those first two words, our Father, We see the Aramaic word patros, okay, which is where we get father, paternity, all that kind of stuff from. But we know it better translated translated into the Greek because the word translated in the Greek is Abba. And that literally means daddy. And and what we look at this now, we, we see the Lord's prayer is this formal prayer and all that kind of stuff. But Jesus actually meant it as the exact opposite because he says, when you start to pray to say, our daddy. Why? Because what Jesus is encouraging us to is that personal, intimate prayer life with the Father. He wants us to adore him. And, and you know, this, this term Abba was an, inter- an enduring term that, that children would often use for their fathers. But the Jews would never, ever think of using it towards God. In fact, in their prayers, they, they did everything they can to, to avoid using any term of God, you know, whether it be Jehovah or Elohim or like that, out of reverence. And there is a place for reverence in prayer. But Jesus, the very first thing he shows us is that he wants our prayer life with God, with God and with him to be personal and to be intimate. And we should revere God. Hence the use of the term hallowed. But our relationship with Jesus is much more powerful when it's intimate and it's personal. Daddy is better. And, 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 and so he wants us to adore him. And I'm going to give you some examples on how to adore him in just a second. I, wanna, I don't want to leave you just kind of like this is what it is. But he says, but what I want you to understand here is that he wants that personal, intimate relationship. Now, you don't have to call him Daddy or Abba. <laughs> I, my kids, they go to a Christian school and they learn the term Abba in their Bible class and then one of them popped it out at dinner table um, in a total like satirical, mocking kind of way and I'm like, uh-uh, that's for Jesus, not me, <laughs> you know? And, and the thing is, but he, he, you don't have to call him Abba or Daddy. But more importantly, he, what he's saying is he wants you to talk to him like you would talk to anybody else. You don't have to be formal. You want to be formal? You want to pray in the King James? That's totally fine. But Jesus is okay with us just talking to him like you would talk to anybody else. And then, I think it's interesting, he says, Our Father. And this prayer reminds us of the fact that all Christian believers are one in him. And then when we pray, we're praying as a church. So, and then, the second part here, we see, hallowed be thy name, okay? And and that is a phrase in in the Greek, asking God to enable us and all men to recognize who he is and to honor him. And I think that's great. Hallowed be thy name. So you have that personal, God, you're so awesome. But at the same time, you're praying in that that reverent manner like, God, you are the almighty, all-knowing, everywhere God. But yet you love us so personally. And you see, that's what's amazing is that you have this creator of the universe, this one who who knows everything. I mean, he knows the hairs upon your head. That's how well he knows you. And he wants you to know him that well. But part of that is the reverence that always remembering, while he's your heavenly father, he's also the almighty God. And he wants you to recognize that. Now, I told you I'd give you some example, and David gives us some clues, okay? Now, before I get into this verse right here, I want you to understand that most of the books, or most of the the chapters in Psalm are prayers or songs, 
Okay, so if you don't know how to adore or how to worship the Lord, how, you know, I encourage you, take one psalm a day, okay? Most psalms are about 17 to 25 verses long, all right? Except for Psalm 119, break that into 25 verses, it'll take you about a week to read. It's a lot, a lot of verses. But, but most psalms, there's some more than 25, there's some less than 17. But just read one psalm a day, and what you'll find even in the imprecatory pre- psalms, which basically ask for God to rain down fire upon the enemies kind of thing, they always bring it back around. But you are the great and almighty and wonderful God, and you know me. But what they'll do is they'll teach us how to worship the Lord. They'll teach us how to, who, to, to truly speak. And look at the words that David uses. And I think this is a unique um, to, uh, um, psalm, and that's why I use it. But it says right here, ascribe to the Lord. O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And so David is basically saying, and he's praying, you know, and he's telling the heavenly beings, show how great God is. Show his glory and his strength. And, you know, we all know that term ascribe. Ascribe means to basically define or, or, or to write something down to. And, and, and so what, what David is saying is, is give credit. Show the glory and the honor of the Lord. And, and, and that's where it starts right there in our prayer life, that we want to see the glory of the Lord. And it comes first and foremost from our mouth because then in verse 2, David changes it to himself. He says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in splendor of holiness. Now, what I love, I love what David's saying about here is, is the fact is, is that give the Lord the glory that he is due. And you can do this by thanking him. You can do this by reciting all of the, the names of God. Okay, You, you can do this by, by even just reading out a psalm aloud. You can do this by creating your own vocabulary and telling God how wonderful he is. But the fact is, it has to be a verbal aspect of our mouth, telling God how good he is. So here's the challenge, okay? Here's the challenge. I'm going to give you five keys, right? And I told you, you know, the, the typical Christian plays only a couple times a week for a couple minutes a day, all right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take each of these five keys, all right? And I want you to just to spend 30 seconds on each one. Okay? Now, if you do 30 seconds on all five, you'll end up at two and a half minutes. Okay? So you'll break the national average. And I'm going pr- to challenge you to do it every day this week. And you can use a journal about the things you're praying about. But that's what I'm going to challenge you guys to do. Okay? So you're just spending 30 seconds just glorifying the Lord, adoring Him. And I guarantee you that as you do this, you'll realize that, that, that it will, um, it will grow your prayer life. Not so much in the sense of just time, but you will grow your prayer life in the sense of, uh, of the, the, the recognition of how miraculous God is. When we take the focus off of ourselves and our needs and we give Him the glory,